This presentation will cover both the design and construction process for the utility improvement project on North Gray Street from Prairie Avenue to North Avenue. The project personnel associated with this project include Village Trustee for District 4, Andrew Honig, Village Manager, Scott Niehaus, Public Works Director, Carl Goldsmith, Assistant Director, David Gorman, and Civil Engineer, Ray Schwab. The Village's consultant for this project is Civil Tech Engineering of Itasca. Key project personnel for Civil Tech are President John Vanna, Project Manager David Krieger, and Project Engineer Kyle Clary. My name is Kyle Clary, and I'm a Project Engineer at Civil Tech Engineering. To start things off, I will be explaining an overview of the North Gray Street Utility Improvement Project and the design elements involved. The limits of the 2023 utility work on North Gray Street are from Prairie Avenue to North Avenue. The underground utility work is the first step in the overall improvement of the right-of-way. Improving the underground infrastructure will minimize the time and scope of work that will be necessary during the subsequent roadway construction. The underground utility work is a precursor to the roadway improvement project on North Gray Street. The roadway work will be a separate project that will incorporate federal funding. Currently, the roadway project is scheduled for design in 2024 and construction in 2026. The limit of the improvements will be from St. Charles Road to North Avenue. The exact scale of the project will be determined from the resulting engineering study. Primary issues will include addressing roadway drainage and cross slopes, necessary curb and gutter repairs, addressing sustainable transportation for bicycles and pedestrians, and compliance with the American Disability Act. The roadway itself will not be widened. The scope of underground utility improvements include water main replacement, water main lining, and water service replacement. In addition, the sanitary sewer includes replacement, lining, and the installation of new or partially new service laterals. There are two water mains located in the North Gray Street right-of-way between Prairie Avenue and View Street. One is 6 inches in diameter and the other is 12 inches in diameter. With a history of numerous breaks on the 6-inch main, services from the 6-inch main shall be retired and new services installed on the 12-inch main. All properties whose services will be impacted by the transfer or replacement of the 6-inch water main shall have a new service box installed. In other areas of the project, the existing 6-inch water main will either be lined or replaced. Again, this is due to the age and break history of the 6-inch main. New 1-inch copper water services will be installed from the new main to the property line. Regardless if you are being transferred from the old 6-inch water main to the 12-inch main, or if you are connected to the new 6-inch or lined 6-inch water main, your water pressure will remain the same or slightly increase. New fire hydrants will also be installed. This is to meet the spacing standard and to replace older hydrants that do not meet current village standards. This slide shows the typical installation of new water main and the new 1-inch water service connection. The service connection runs from the main to the service box. The required depth of the water main is 5.5 feet deep. The service box is typically located 1 foot off the property line. From Pleasant Lane to Goble Drive, the contractor will be installing a cured-in-place water main lining rather than replacing the main. Lining the water main eliminates nearly all of the restoration component of the job. This will characteristically result in lower construction costs. To install cured-in-place piping, the contractor will first install a temporary bypass water main on the ground surface and connect existing house services to the bypass main. The contractor will then remove small sections of pavement and excavate access pit areas. Access pits are typically at each existing water valve and fire hydrant. Next, the inside of the existing water main will be cleaned. 
the new liner will then be inserted inside of the existing water main. After the liner is cured, the contractor will drill holes from inside of the water main using a robotic drill to reconnect existing services. Once services have been reconnected, the temporary bypass main will be removed. Lastly, the contractor will backfill access pits and patch the roadway. The existing sanitary sewer main is also in need of rehabilitation. The sanitary sewer is typically located in the parkways. To reduce the impacts on the mature trees, sidewalks, and residential driveway aprons, much of the main will be rehabilitated by trenchless technology. This is accomplished by using cured-in-place pipe, or CIPP lining. CIPP lining uses a textile liner tube and a liquid resin. This process will be less impactful by eliminating excavation and restoration. The liner will restore the structural integrity of the pipe and reduce the amount of groundwater infiltration, which will help minimize clear water entering the sewer, thus reducing the volume of effluent to treat and also helping to reduce the frequency of basement backups. In locations where the existing main line has sagged or settled, which impacts the flow of sewage within the pipe, full replacement of the sewer between manholes will be necessary. This will require excavating down to the main to remove and replace the pipe in kind. In the sections where the sanitary sewer is fully replaced, the sanitary services to the adjacent houses will be replaced from the main to the property line. A new cleanout will be installed at locations where they do not currently exist in order to allow the village to maintain the section of the service from the property line to the sewer main. This slide shows the typical installation of the new sanitary service from the sanitary sewer main to each property line with the proposed cleanout. The existing sanitary sewer is very deep in some areas where replacement is necessary. The excavation required is expected to impact private property and the right-of-way. Affected items in the right-of-way include sidewalk, driveway aprons, and parkway trees. The contractor will utilize trench boxes to minimize the width of the excavation and the extent of these impacts. Any residential properties that are expected to be affected have already been contacted for a grant of temporary easement. All restoration of private property will be at no cost to the property owner and replaced per village standards. Additional precautions will be taken to protect trees and bushes located within or adjacent to the temporary easement. My name is Ray Schwab. I'm a civil engineer, capital improvement project manager with the village of Lombard. My role will be working with the contractor and the on-site personnel to manage the construction contract on behalf of the village. The Public Works Department is in the final stage of selecting the on-site resident project representative, RPR, otherwise known as the resident engineer. That will be the individual who will be the immediate point of contract for questions or to address immediate concerns. Village representatives will also periodically be on site. Their role is to assist the resident engineer and the contractor in addressing any questions they may have about the village's underground utilities. Village representatives will gladly answer resident questions or relay them to the appropriate party. The bids for the project are due on March 6th and are anticipated to be presented to the Village Board of Trustees on March 16th. The village and the selected contractor will conduct a pre-construction meeting about two weeks after the award. At the meeting, the village and the contractor will determine a construction start date. Based on the status of the contracts, bonds, and insurance, along with the resolution of any natural gas, electric, and telecommunication coordination issues, work should begin in April and conclude in October. The sequence of construction is anticipated to follow the order listed on the slide. However, the means and methods are determined by the contractor. The final sequence of construction will be determined by the contractor, pending concurrence by the village. However, the general sequence of construction will start by placing traffic control at the limits of the job. Underground utilities will then be identified. Street regulatory signs will be removed. Trees will be marked for removal. Then underground utilities will be constructed, followed by curb and gutter, 
asphalt pavement, sidewalk, electrical work, driveway apron restoration, seating, and the surface layer of asphalt. Lastly, the replaced section of the lighting system will be tested. Key takeaways for residents are the temporary relocation of mailboxes in the areas that will be affected by underground construction. Also, the implementation of one-way traffic during the excavation phase of the job is another important item. Residents should also be aware of the downtown sidewalk project that will take place concurrently with the North Gray Street project. The brick pavers in the downtown area along St. Charles Road between North Elizabeth Street and North Martha are being replaced. It is suggested that residents keep up with the progress of this project as to avoid as much construction as possible. Households within the work zone will receive an initial newsletter outlining what to expect during construction and the details of signing up for Notify Me. During the term of the project, the village will communicate to households within the construction area through a series of newsletters and notices. Newsletters will detail the progress of the project and any items that residents should be aware of. These will be mailed approximately every four to six weeks, dependent upon the progress of construction. Additional notices shall be hand delivered before any activities that may disrupt access, water sewer service, or if any unforeseen circumstances result in changes to services. The displayed newsletter is a sample of what will be mailed to your home. The displayed sample notice is what will be hand delivered to your front door. This will explain events that have an extended effect on mail service, garbage pickup, traffic flow, driveway access, and water or sewer service. Another form of notice are door hangers. They address pending driveway access and water service disruption. Typically, water service will be disrupted when the water lines are transferred from the old to the new water main or during the water main lining process. During construction, there may be situations where unforeseen circumstances may result in a disruption of service. In this event, the on-site representative will contact the household to inform them of how long the disruption may be. It is recommended that during underground construction, residents keep a gallon or two of water in the refrigerator in the event of any unexpected water service disruption. The village also has a digital form of communication called Notify Me. Notify Me is an email service to receive information regarding a particular project or event. Before the start of construction, the village will mail out instructions on how to sign up for Notify Me. Residents may elect to go online and navigate the village website and sign up for Notify Me on their own. Getting back to construction, trees scheduled to be removed will be marked with an X. The criteria for tree removal are dead, diseased, or in decline. A few trees will be removed due to an unavoidable conflict with new underground utility construction. New parkway trees will be planted in the spring of 2024. Those residents eligible for a new parkway tree will receive a letter in late February, early March of 2024. The letter will list the available species of trees. Make your selection of your top three picks and return your selection to the village. Requests are filled on a first come, first serve basis as there are limited numbers of each type of tree. Most residents will require parking passes. When the contractor is placing curb and gutter, asphalt pavement, driveway aprons, and or sidewalk, residents will not be able to access their driveway. The village will mail out two passes per household. If additional passes are required, contact Public Works and additional passes shall be supplied. As necessary, residents shall be able to park overnight outside the work zone. Be sure to display the passes as the police department will be checking the overnight parking areas. Park only in those areas where parking is normally permitted. Do not block driveways or park in front of fire hydrants. Residents whose private property will be directly affected by sanitary sewer construction have already been notified by the village. A request for the granting of a temporary easement involves access to private property during construction. Owners have been sent a form that will allow the contractor to temporarily access their property and perform the necessary utility work. Any private property that is disturbed shall be restored at no cost to the owner. 
driveway aprons will be replaced with the same material that is currently in place. If a resident wishes to upgrade their apron from asphalt to concrete, the resident engineer can provide a quote, which will be the difference in cost between the two materials. In the unlikely event bids for concrete are less than asphalt, all removed aprons will be constructed in concrete. Please note, the contractor is not obligated to do work on private property. In the event work on private property is undertaken, be sure to obtain a construction permit through the Community Development Department. Public Works can assist in this matter. For the North Gray Street project, the sidewalk will go back in the same location. Due to the excavation related to the replacement of the sanitary sewer, three light poles will be temporarily relocated. One is in the vicinity of East Greenfield, another is in the vicinity of East View Street, and the third is in the vicinity of East Pleasant. Near the conclusion of construction, street lights shall be returned to their approximate original location. Shortly after that, the village will conduct a 48-hour test burn of the street lighting system. Construction is messy and dusty. Village staff and the resident engineer will work with the contractor to apply water to help control the dust during particularly dry weather periods. Public Works is available to answer your questions. Contact the department at 630-620-5740 or via email at publicworks at villageoflombard.org.